Battlefield 5 is in need of more content, and anyone who has been playing the game is more than likely craving new maps, new factions, vehicles, weapons, and cosmetics. The recent Battlefield roadmap that DICE released does show a selection of new content that will be coming our way soon. However, it's a little bit vague when it comes to the specific details. A post on Reddit by Temporal outlines a summary of everything we will potentially be receiving when the big Chapter 5 update drops later this year. Chapter 5 is called Awakening the Giant and relates to the Pacific Theatre of War between the US and the Japanese. In this video, I'll show you everything you can expect to receive with the Chapter 5 update when it comes to the vehicles, with a bit of surrounding information to explain exactly what the vehicle is and what it looks like. Please bear in mind that this information is from a data mine and someone has trawled through the game files in order to get these snippets of information. As always with this sort of info, just because it's in the game files doesn't mean it will be coming to the game immediately, nor does it mean we will receive it 100% accurately either. The chances are that we will get all of these cool new vehicles, but as with things in the past, there is a slight chance it might not make it, or maybe it will come at a later date, maybe a future chapter. There is also a large possibility more stuff is added to this list, so don't be disappointed if your favourite World War II vehicle doesn't appear in this video. This is mainly going to be connected to the air vehicles, as there are only a few in this data mine, and I believe there probably will be more when Chapter 5 releases. Starting out, we'll take a look at the ground vehicles. Firstly, we have the M4A3 Sherman, the medium tank. This tank was the most widely used medium tank by the US and Western Allies in World War II. The M4 Sherman tank was produced in several variants and was also the basis for a number of related vehicles. This means we could see some slight variants attached to this M4 medium tank. The M4A3 was the preferred US Army vehicle. There is a large chance that we will receive the T-34 Calliope variant since the Calliope rockets were spotted in the game or in the game files. Next up we have the Type 97 Chai Ha, a medium tank. This was used by the Imperial Japanese Army during the Second Sino-Japanese War, the battles of Kalkin Gol against the Soviet Union and the Second World War. It was the most widely produced Japanese medium tank of World War II. Next up we have the Type 3 Chai Nu, another medium tank. The Type 3 medium tank Chai Nu was a medium tank of the Imperial Japanese Army in the Second World War. Like the Type 1 Chai He, this tank was an improved version of the Type 97. It incorporated a Type 3 75mm tank gun, one of the largest Japanese tank guns during the war. I expect this vehicle to pack a punch when it appears in Battlefield 5. Next up we have the Ford GPW, the Willys MB, and the Ford GPW, commonly known as the Jeep, are off-road capable light military utility vehicles that were manufactured during World War II. This, of course, links to the Allied forces, and this is something I thought we'd see when Battlefield V released, but of course we didn't have access to the US faction. It is synonymous with the Second World War. Next up we have the staff car, this kind of relates to Firestorm because we've seen similar things appear with Firestorm with transport vehicles. Of course it's a vehicle used to get around the place mainly by senior military officers and is part of the White Fleet, that is the country's fleet of staff cars or vehicles. Staff cars are often painted in camouflage colours or plain black and you'll also see them in a flat olive drab. This could relate to the cosmetics in Battlefield 5. Next up we have the Type 95, this is a Japanese scout car and was used during the war with China and of course in World War II in the East. Between 1936 and 1944 approximately 4,700 were built and it's the only completely Japanese designed reconnaissance car ever used by the Imperial Japanese Army which tended to use civilian cars for most of its work. Moving on to the air vehicles, as I mentioned earlier, there are only two here, and I expect to see more when the game does reach Chapter 5. The Vought F4U Corsair. This is many people's favourite air vehicle, or at least in their top couple of air vehicles that they would love to see in the game. The Corsair was designed and operated as a carrier-based aircraft, and entered service in large numbers with the US Navy in late 1944 and early 1945. 
Some Japanese pilots regarded it as the most formidable American fighter of World War II and its naval aviators achieved an 11 to 1 kill ratio. It was formidable, it was very strong and it would do a lot of damage to the Japanese during the late parts of the Second World War. Next up we have the Mitsubishi A6M0. This is a long range fighter aircraft formerly manufactured by Mitsubishi Aircraft Company and operated by the Imperial Japanese Navy from 1940 to 1945. The Zero is considered to have been the most capable carrier based fighter in the world when it was introduced early in the Second World War combining excellent maneuverability and very long range. Now what I'm interested to see is whether DICE will make it one of the better planes in the game or are they going to take a look at it and think we'll just balance it out and it'll be one of many planes in the game that you can play and they all have their specialties and maybe a couple of downsides as well. Maybe they'll link it into the specializations in the game, we will see. Now on to the sea-based vehicles and the naval vehicles in Battlefield 5. The Type 2 Car Mi, the special Type 2 launch Car Mi was the first amphibious tank of the Imperial Japanese Navy and it's also based on the Imperial Japanese Army's Type 95 light tank with some major modifications. Next up we have the landing vehicle Tracked LVT. It's an amphibious warfare vehicle and amphibious landing craft introduced by the US Navy, originally intended as a cargo carrier for ships to shore operations, they evolved into assault troop and fire support vehicles. Next up we have the PT boat, short for patrol torpedo boat. This was a torpedo armed fast attack vessel used by the United States Navy in World War II. It was small, it was fast and very inexpensive to build, valued for its maneuverability and speed but hampered at the beginning of the war by ineffective torpedoes, limited armament and a comparatively fragile construction that limited some of the variants to coastal waters. The LCVP, the Landing Craft Vehicle Personnel or Higgins Boat, was a landing craft used extensively in amphibious landings in the Second World War. The craft was designed by Andrew Higgins based on boats made for operating in swamps and marshes. Next up we have something that doesn't really have a place on a vehicle list but it is in the data mined files. It's a dinghy. Submarine warfare in the Battle of the Atlantic led to casualties among warships and merchant ships and in the military inflatable boats were used to transport torpedoes and other cargo and potentially troops to get into shallow water and then land and then go on foot from there. What variant of dinghy we will receive? I don't have a clue. The guy who data mined this information also doesn't know. Potentially it could be something large, maybe for four to five people, or it could be a one to two person dinghy. I'm not sure. Finally, we have the MTBT-1, the motor torpedo boat. This probably relates to the Japanese with this class identifier, although there were some German boats as well, also known as T1s, mainly the 1935 type. However, it will probably be related to the Japanese vehicles in this patch. There are also a few unreleased tanks from the previous data mine that haven't come to the game yet, however there is a bit of information on them. Anyway, as I personally think, they will reach us at some point in the near future. On screen now you can see the Bishop. This is a self-propelled artillery British vehicle based on the Valentine tank and armed with the 25-pounder gun howitzer, which could fire either 87.6mm HE shell or an armour-piercing shell. The vehicle was designed quickly and production was rushed, meaning it had many problems when released, limiting the number made and leading to it being replaced by a better design. Next up we have the Marder. I'm not sure what variant of Marder we will be receiving. It could be the 1, the 2 or the 3. However, the Marder 3 was a German tank destroyer that offered little protection to the crew with its open top fighting compartment, but significant firepower compared to other tanks at the time. Maybe DICE will again look at the specializations with the Marda in order to make it very, very offensive and powerful, but very poor when it comes to defending itself against other tanks. Next up, we have the Grill. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's a self-propelled artillery vehicle used by Nazi Germany during the war and was based on the Panzer 38T tank chassis, a tank that we already have access to in Battlefield 5. 
Next up we have tank customization. It hasn't come to the game yet, but advanced vehicle customization has been coming soon for quite some time with different types of chassis and turrets being something players have wanted since it was first teased in the trailer last year. So far we are aware of four sets with common, uncommon, rare and epic turrets and chassis variants for each tank. And although some of the epic ones will be hidden behind the Battlefield Coins microtransaction system, I'm sure some will be purchasable with company coins. Some people are excited for the Japanese cosmetic items that will almost certainly accompany the introduction of the Japanese faction in Chapter 5, whilst others remain apprehensive due to the recent microtransaction update. Cosmetics are great, but if they cost over $7 each, you can't realistically expect to get access to many of them unless you break the bank and don't really care about how much you spend. Mainly I would say that people are excited to see the US and Japan in the game. So far we've only had access to a very small portion of what occurred in the Second World War, and as Battlefield has historically been a game that doesn't fail to deliver on that all-out war wide-scale environment, it has been fairly disappointing to only gain access to two factions so far. This Chapter 5 update might be what is needed to really push BF5 to the next level, but will it be in time? I personally have to comment that there are very impressive numbers of vehicles in Battlefield 5, assuming the ones I've just spoken about make it to the game, and although this doesn't necessarily mean the game is great, it does combat some of the arguments that state the game has no content. I still believe that maps are the most important thing, and a handful of new maps scattered across the next few months could fix the problem with the content, but we know that we won't be receiving many until this big Chapter 5 update, so hopefully Firestorm will keep me satisfied in the meantime. Let me know what you think of this down in the comments. Let me know what you think of this data mine as well. Are you excited to see these vehicles coming to the game or was your favorite vehicle missed off the list? Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.